And we are live. Hi, everybody. This is Sound Booth Theater Live. I am Jeff Hayes, your host. And today we are working with Matthew Siege and Will Watt and Annie Ellicott. Um, she's going to be in here in just a second. So um, before we get started, um, I'm really excited to let you guys know that we have our very first sponsor for the show. Um, Studio Bricks has sponsored us. Uh, Studio Bricks is the company that makes the booth that you're seeing right here. Uh, this is this is a lovely woman. This is not a booth. Um, <laughs> there we go. Ta-da! Um, this stylish thing. Here. Absolutely. Well. Um, Studio Bricks makes what, in my opinion, are the most stylish and easy to use sound booths out there. Actually, Will Watt also has one. He's got one in white. Uh, I, I have another. I have another one coming. <coughs> uh, uh, let's see. Probably about two weeks. It'll be here. Sorry, I'm still sick, guys. But oh. um, anyway, I, I'm I'm really thankful for for having a, a sponsor like them, and we'll continue to pimp them out. So if you're an audiobook narrator out there, if you're an aspiring voice actor, um, uh, check out their their website in the description below. And now on to our primary guests today, Mr. Matthew Siege. Matthew, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, Matthew is the author of Save Point Upload, a new series, a new lit RPG series. What, what do you say, it's lit RPG or game lit? Um, I, think it's, I think it's lit RPG. I know the, the battle is still being fought about what's what. Um, <laughs> right, right. But to me, it's lit RPG. That they know their numbers too well to kind of hand wave anything else, I think. Cool. So now, this is, is this your second Lit RPG series? Um, it's kind of my second and a half. I've got a, an ongoing thing that I want to play with that started out as a serial and now is stuck in my head. So, yeah, I suppose it's my second of any length. Awesome. And could you tell us a little bit more about, about uh, Save Point? Yeah, Save Point is essentially the story of a guy named Adam who, who has stage four brain cancer is angry at the world because of that. He's probably probably too nice a guy to do the things that I would do if I were actually angry at the world. Um, and so he's kind of thrown himself into his anger and doing his best not to be kind of introspective about that. Um, and in the midst of all that, he gets snatched by a, a secret government organization and told that he's got 13 days that are decreed by an alien civilization to go into this place called the Citadel and do something important. So I guess the first book really wrestles, it's him wrestling with why should he bother saving somebody else when the universe is kind of already spat in his face. That's intense. Um, I'm, I'm, really, uh, I'm really excited to get to, to work on this project. Um, I was intrigued right from the get-go from your disgusting alien mosquito monster on the front. Well, that's and, you, um, that's Cav there. Definitely spikes. That's me? With me? Yes. <laughs> All right. So now, now I have a visual reference for what I'm supposed to sound like. Indeed. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's um, that is our first project for our newest member of the Sound Booth Theater troupe, Mr. Will Watt. Hello. Um, I, I will. Thanks so Hi. much for joining us. And thank you. Uh, for having me. Will Watt is a narrator that I found um, a while back when uh, an author approached me. Um, I can't remember his name now. He did Star Child. What's this? Oh, What's yeah. Video? Yeah. Uh, I, he, he actually watched an episode of Sound Booth Theater Live, and we talked a bit. And, uh, I, and um, he asked me, I, I, I can't remember exactly what what it was that we were talking about but a deal fell through but it wasn't a big deal and then i saw that he had hired will to do star child and i was so impressed with his narration that i had decided at that point that was maybe more than a year ago i was like okay i gotta hire this guy at some point I so now now we have now we have an opportunity to work together i'm really excited for him to uh <laughs> to be working with us so will can you tell people about yourself 
Yeah, so uh, my name's Will. I'm a voice actor. We know this already. Um, I'm British, which is a bit a bit controversial because um, the book uh, that we're talking about today is going to be narrated in an American accent. So I'm going to ask you all to be real patient, okay? Don't judge. I'm a nice guy. I'm trying my best. Um, but thankfully, I live in the US. I live in New York um, in this bizarre bordello that I seem to be occupying. Um, but yeah, I'm from the southwest of England originally. Um, I do a nice little healthy mix with my voice acting of primarily audiobooks. Um, and I do about 50% highbrow non-fiction stuff, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so I did like an LGBT history of London last year by uh, Peter Ackroyd, who's like a very eminent uh, British historian. Um, and then the other 50% of my work um, is romance and erotica, which is also super fun. Um, and I have a burgeoning fan base there as well. Um, but then like over the last year or so, I've been like slowly getting into doing some uh, fantasy sci-fi. I've done a lot of urban fantasy over the last year. Um, so this lit RPG direction is uh, is very much kind of in keeping with that, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting to be able to come in and do stuff with you guys here, particularly because you're doing kind of more full cast. It's almost like a, like like radio drama, which is kind of what I grew up on and what inspired me towards voice acting so it's fun sort of doing more of that kind of stuff and uh, breaking the monotony and boredom of standing in a booth on my own all day every day so uh, thank you for being my friends guys <laughs> you're welcome uh, glad to have you on board Thanks. and uh, now before we get started um, we're <coughs> we're going to be uh, oh I'm sorry I forgot to introduce Annie how could how could I I'm sorry Gosh. Annie will be doing the female characters for save point. Can you say hi to everybody, please? Hi, guys and gals. Um, everyone knows that Annie's their favorite part of Sound Booth Theater, so uh, um, Matthew's very lucky to have her on this book as well. And um, yeah, let's get started. So, Matthew, you've already picked out scenes for us, or both you and Will have negotiated scenes? Yeah, I think we're doing a couple seasons. One kind of takes place back on the Earth side of his life, and one on this kind of alien side. Okay, cool. So before we get started, um, whenever, like, now whenever Will messes up or Annie's not doing the, uh, a particular character properly, and you want to give us a little bit more guidance, not not messes up, but you know, if you're if you're not really into the way he's doing a particular character, not don't your vision. Yeah, don't hesitate to stop us. You're the director here. Yeah, that's the point of this. That's that's a large part of why we do this. Right, because yeah. we want we want to make sure we get your characters right. Um, and, but for now, if you're not speaking, could you please uh, mute? Because it sounds like you're right next to a grinder made specifically for uh, killing human beings and making them into hamburger. Easy thing to do. One of those kinds of grinders, I think. Yeah. Uh, can you still hear me? Uh, yes. Oh, excellent. No, still, still there. I'm back. I think it, it, there should be a mute button on Google Hangout itself. Okay, I'll use that one. Just remember to unmute yourself when you want to interject. I wish I had. Oh wow! Music. There we go. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's Matthew who's next to the meat grinder. Oh, it might be me. Will, oh, are you murdering good. people and turning them into hamburger? Only a little bit, guys. Keep oh it. man, Aww. I'm trying you're to do like, this underground. Okay, you're, you're right. doing character study for your upcoming role in Sweeney Todd. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I think I know what it might be. I'm going to go and turn off the um, fan in the background. I'll be right back. Gotcha. Excuse me. We'll be right back. Y'all. Did it stop? Absolutely, yes. Oh, incredible. I just had to stop grinding people for a second. Just for a moment. This is going to set me okay. back on my uh, on my ex extensive number of uh, meat burger, uh, human meat burger orders. Uh, but it's all right. It's the sacrifices I make for my art. Um, <laughs> well, I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so so um, could you give us the the uh, starting line? Mm-hmm. 
I sure can. Um, do you want me to give it to you for reference, or are we starting here? Yeah, no, just so so I can search for it and um, watch the script on my own. That left me all by my lonesome in the cold. Hmm. What chapter? Sorry, what chapter is it? I just now realized I got the whole book. Um, it's chapter four. Okay. And I think it's on page fifty-seven in the if you've got the book book version. All right. So in this scene, we have Adam and Evelyn. Um, I'm sorry. Um. What's the first line in the chapter? Uh, that left me all by my lonesome. Well, the first line in the in the chapter is oh. despite his words, talking okay. was surprisingly smooth. No, the, 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 scene sure. is what she, the scene is what she meant. Oh, I no, I did actually meant the chapter because I still oh, okay. don't understand what's happening. Neither do I. Uh -huh. We're not working on all cylinders, folks. Okay. And then a couple pages down from that, maybe three. Um, are you looking at the, the book or the audio drama? The audio drama. Audio drama. Cool. That That's left cool. me. All by my lonesome. Oh. Um... Okay. We got it. Yep, so... got it. All right. Action. Uh, did you already explain who Evelyn is and I missed it? Oh, sorry. No, we didn't. All right. Characters. Characters. <laughs> Who's in the scene? Um, so we talked a little bit about how, how, who Adam is. He's the main character. He's kind of um, cut off from humanity because of his stage four brain cancer and has, a, has an opportunity at a new life if he chooses to take it, although he can only be there for the first time. Um, Evelyn is a theoretical physicist who knows a lot has to be careful what she says. Um, she's probably in over her head as well. Um, she tries to maintain a professional distance from people that she sees have, have to go through horrible things on behalf of humanity. Okay. Amazing. Second sticks. Wow. All right. Every, is that all the characters in this scene? Yeah, I think so. All right. Amazing. <laughs> That left me all by my lonesome in the cold. In the cold. That left me, I am all by my lonesome in the cold. It's freaking freezing in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, now my iPad's like flipped the to the cold. Long. The cold brings out the British in you. It does, it does. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, now my script's playing. Why is it not? Sorry, the orientation thing on the iPad Did is- Did you like... accidentally lock it? No, it's just, I think it's just because it's a really old iPad because I refuse to modernize. Punch it. <laughs> and That's I how you deal with old electronics. It, it still punch works it. with electronics um, that are older than 2008, the punching technique. It, it, it has helped me out a lot in the past. Here we go, yeah. I guess I'm doing it a landscape orientation, much against my, much against my will, but never mind. Um, that left me all on my lonesome in the cold, sterile hallway. One direction led back to the ship, while the other arced upward due to the curvature of the station's construction. Great. I'd been here for all of 60 seconds, and I was already pretty much out of options. Here I am, assholes. Come and get your 13 days, whatever that means. I'm going out on a limb, and I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that Colonel Booker simply abandoned you here. A woman said from behind me. I'm sorry about that. I spun around to face the source. She'd surprised me, but even through the shock, I was aware of how pretty she was. If I'd had longer to live and not been dragged out of my apartment like an animal, I might have been a bit more I might have been a bit more interested. Chill out, I told myself. There's nothing wrong with taking in the sights, right? I'm Evelyn, she said and the breathiness of her voice matched the softness of her skin when I took the hand she held out to me. Her handshake was firm and professional, though far too short for my liking. If you hear people talk about Dr. Riscatelli, though, that's me too. Before we start, 
Tell me straight. Have you and I spoken already? I blinked. What the hell was she talking about? Of course not. She nodded. I had to ask. Anyway, are you ready to begin? Evelyn was probably only a couple of years older than me. Unfortunately for her, the doctor had one of those bodies that she could never make completely appropriate. She was obviously aware of that since she clearly tried to tone down her looks. It wasn't working. The horn-rimmed glasses only served to call attention to her pale blue eyes, and the professional lab coat didn't have a hope in hell of concealing her curves. I was pissed off that I couldn't talk myself into looking away from her, much less responding to the question. Worse, by the way a warm blush crept up her neck and the awkward way she glanced away. Evelyn was aware that I was staring. Um, I said, sorry. She tied her blonde hair back in a ponytail and she nervously tucked a stray strand behind her ear in embarrassment. Don't worry. You've been through a lot, and it's only natural to hope that the first friendly face is an ally. I am, by the way. Good. Shit, this wasn't going well. I swallowed hard and tried again. I guess I'm at your service, Doctor. I'd been desperately trying to come off as cool, but instead, it sounded like I was trying to copy the military demeanor of the guys who'd ripped me out of my apartment not so long ago. It was a lame thing to say, and she shook her head at me. You aren't oh, at my... Oh. I'm sorry, one second, guys. Yeah. Will, do you have, like, maybe a, a loose connection somewhere? Because it, it sounds like mosquitoes are being shocked. I really, it might just be that there's... It might just be that this is not a very good microphone. But I can move into my booth where I've got a very good microphone, and I can use that instead. I was just trying to be lazy and sit down. But I can always not be lazy. I'll do it for you guys. I'll do it for Okay, maybe, maybe Maybe we should do that. It's like, I think we're we're all going to have, like, <laughs> a mosquito elect everybody. electricity burns. This, this is the real reason why I'm the only one not wearing monitors right now. Like, <laughs> I'm like, good, the buzzsaw will get into all their brains. <laughs> okay, we need to put one of those, like, let's go to the lobby cue card things. And, like, right. Everyone go grab yourself some popcorn. BRB. Yeah. Okay. Anna, can you maybe dance for us? Yeah, oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> make, some, make some noise so you're yeah, the It has to be it. heavy on the head and shoulders because that's go. all you can see. So yeah. if I had if I had the the if I had my full body, you know, exposed to the camera, it would be more varied than this, just so you guys know. But for now, you're going to get a lot of, like, uh, flirty shoulders and, like, mm, 1920s <laughs> eye motions. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. I wish we had some Steely Dan to go with it. <laughs> I could do my Betty Boop so, impression. Oh, nice. I want to oh hello that last boop went a little little south. Alright, looks like looks like he has returned. Who else by Will's American accent? His gank accent. I'm impressed. Yeah, thank you. Um, hold up, let me, I'm very aware that my face is very present right now, like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a, a real front and center part of everyone's reality. If it's, if it's any consolation, Will, um, I have a pimple on my cheek that I can literally see in my own line of vision. Oh, no. Like, I can actually see it right now. Well, I can't see it if it's any consolation. You know, it's, it's, it's blurred out as far it's as I know. The power of these LED he's, lights and the orangish lighting. The he's probably background. assuming it's a beauty mark. <laughs> you only think of the whole screen when you're talking, so it's not like your voice actors or anything. You'll be fine. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. I have done my switch cool. over. Does this sound better? Yeah, dude. We're not being electrocuted anymore. <laughs> Incredible. My my devious plan foiled once more. Uh, okay. okay, wait a minute. 
Where, what? Where's, hold on, where are you? Right, I'm back. Where am I? I am in. <laughs> okay. Nice segue. Right. I am in my Studio Bricks booth. Oh, yeah. See? Product placement. And just For like sure. that, all of the issues we're, we were facing melted away. <laughs> Um, no, but for real, I love this thing. And I, I was only not in here. I was trying to sit down because that, that love seat that I was on is so comfy and I've been stood in here all day. But, you know, it's pretty great. It's nice and warm at least because it is yeah. freezing. It is so cold. I cannot explain how like miserably cold it is. And because I'm in New York as well, like we don't get to control our own temperature. Like we get the steam heating thing. Oh, yeah. And so like being here is just like as warm as the city wants to make my building. It's horrible. Wait a minute. Is, is your headset still on out there? Is your gaming headset still on out there? Uh, no, it's unplugged. Is there still, is there more mosquitoes? There's some, there's some. <laughs> there's a difference. It's changed. It's better. Yeah, it's changed. Uh, let me, let me disable the other input so that it's just not a thing. And that okay. way that should... That could be it. Maybe you have like a messed up contact in there or something. Is this better? I'm not hearing it. It's better. Seems, okay. Seems better. I've tapped it. Was, it was tolerable. It, it, uh, it it's was okay. to it's tolerable anyway. We it's like, fine. It's not as bad as totally it was. Good. Here. We're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Annie's line. Sorry guys. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Annie's on Annie's up. Okay. Nice you aren't at my service. You're here to help us all. Everybody you've ever known and all of the ones who might come after. If my lame response had been a bump in the conversation, her words were the equivalent of a seismic event. I'd like to tell you that I know what you're talking about, but I don't. The Colonel was pretty tight-lipped. She shrugged. Sorry, I was... Um, sorry, that was, that was Adam, that line there. Okay, I uh, figured it was. That's a, that's a, uh, well, make, somebody make a note of that. Somebody make it out. Not I'd me. like to tell you that I know what you're talking about, but I don't. The, the colonel, colonel, I can't say an American accent, apparently. The colonel was pretty tight-lipped. She shrugged, and I was unable to ignore the rise and fall of her breasts beneath the lab coat. Everything I tell you now, we'll get back to them. And before you interrupt, she said, holding up a hand, I realize that you don't know who them are. I need you to trust me, though. I promise that I'll tell you everything when I can, but not yet. When? Evelyn pursed her lips. When you come back for the first time. Right now, just let me ask the questions. Just let me ask the questions while you concentrate on doing your best to answer them, okay? I sighed. That doesn't really seem fair. It isn't. But you'll find out fast that we don't have time to worry about things like fairness up here. The stakes are far too high for us to worry about treading lightly. And if I decide to tell you all to get fucked, what then? That struck a nerve, and I saw a flash of anger in her eyes. If our expectations are unreasonable, perhaps you'd, ra perhaps you'd rather we find you a quiet space on board where you can get back to the business of feeling sorry for yourself. Hey now, I said, taking a step back. There's no need for hostility. If you had any idea how my day's gone so far, you'd be a little more... She cut me off. Let me guess. Bagged extraction. Drugged exfilly, <laughs> drugged exfiltration. Oh, like the first Stuff one. exfiliation, <laughs> exfiliatory exfliteration. You're gonna do some damage there. You're casting up all kinds of spells. Who knows what's gonna happen? <laughs> Allah, peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> drugged exfiltration, stuffed into a rocket that Colonel Booker let you think was just a plane and told you and told you'd probably never leave the station he dumped you on i know exactly what happened to you today adam it happened on my orders really Ooh. <laughs> well not the last bit booker's just an incorrigible asshole the rest of it's a necessary evil why 
Like I said, explanations are going to have to wait. The colonel's men sent me the sizes of the clothing you're wearing now, and I've got a suit ready for you. There are always a few minor adjustments to make, though, so let's get started. Thirteen days may seem like a long time, but it goes fast. I need to get you in there before the countdown starts. I grit my teeth. You guys are obsessed with this 13-day thing. What's that even mean? She sighed, checking her watch and then whispering, oh, Shit. What's wrong? We've got nine minutes. Just go with me on this, okay? Once you're suited up and in the labyrinth, we'll all be a lot safer. I could have wasted more time arguing or asking questions, but despite everything, an attractive woman... Blah, blah, blah. But despite everything, an attractive woman asking for a favor still held some power over me. I shut my mouth and nodded. Good. She turned and pointed to a doorway opposite the one the colonel had used. It must have been hidden too, though now it was open. Head in there and get your gear on. The suits are pretty self-explanatory. If you want me to help you, let me know. The process is a fairly intimate one, but we are pressed for time. If you take too long, I'll have to come in and help. I can do it, I said, confident without a reason to be. I turned and stepped through the door, finding myself in a room no bigger than a lavish, well-lit closet. The door slid shut behind me. There was a narrow bench against one wall with what looked like a folded spacesuit on it. Am I an astronaut now? I called. Not really. Her voice wasn't as muffled as I'd expected, and when I looked up, I saw that the wall was perforated where tiny speaker speakers may have been hiding. I shrugged. The room looked like any other changing room I'd been in, if the mall outlets had decided to start opening locations on the moon. Unwilling to look like some fool that couldn't even follow basic instructions, I quickly stripped off my clothes and got to work. The station had a chill about it. I felt it radiating up through the soles of my bare feet, which gave me even more incentive to try my hand at climbing into the suit they provided without help. I've just realized why I think my microphone is going to be sounding awful, and I think it's because, yeah, <laughs> this is why. The post off filter you added before we started? Um, no, it's because I have my audio coming through the webcam's built-in microphone instead of literally the Neumann U87 hanging right here next to my face because I'm an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's causing the buzzsaw. Da, 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 da. We call that we call that pulling an Annie around these parts. Oh good god, I feel like such a moron. <laughs> Such a moron. How embarrassing. This isn't being recorded, don't worry. <laughs> this is not on the internet available to everyone on everyone Earth. Everyone to watch. Oh, People thanks, guys. As we speak. But now why isn't it working? It's now plugged in. Input. Why? Why is it not? What is wrong with it? Technical difficulties is part of the charm of Sound Booth Theater Live. So. Oh my gosh, I really, really, really want some pecans right now. Oof. Roasted. Yes. Too bad we don't have any of those that were cooked last night. I want to make pecan butter, roasted pecan butter in your coffee grinder. Mm. Oh, that sounds delightful. <laughs> Put that shit on an apple! Yum, Ooh. yum, yum. And I have my microphone plugged into the wrong port on the back of my press unit. <laughs> Gosh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Anything anybody can do that makes me feel a little less technologically dumb, I just eat up. I've been stood here and I'm like, why can't I hear myself in my cams? This is really weird. And then I was like, wait, I don't, I don't think the microphone's on. And sure enough, it wasn't. But you guys are about to see a market improvement. Bear with. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Oh, is it yes. now crystal clear and buttery smooth? Yeah. Yes. Much better. Now where's the, <laughs> I put my iPad outside. We're professionals, I promise. I am nothing if not a consummate 
professional <laughs> every moment of my life. <laughs> now, thank you all to remember it. Um, <laughs> well, this is a nice treat for anyone who's hung on this long and is like, you know, tolerating the horrible sound problems. At least it sounds good now. Hmm. This is some ASMR quality stuff. Um, <laughs> both, both okay. <laughs> I'm going to go back a couple of lines to the beginning of that paragraph. <sighs> Find your energy, Will. <sighs> Connect to your character. Bring yourself back into the room. The station had a chill about it. I felt it radiating up through the soles of my bare feet, which gave me even more incentive to try my hand at climbing into the suit they provided without help. The doctor hadn't been kidding about how invasive this thing was. My junk had to go into a specific pouch, and once I'd lined up tab A with slot B, a quick burst of air ran through the inner pocket and kept things very snug. I tried not to squeal when it happened, but as the internal apparatus whirled into place and docked with my external ports, I lurched backward in surprise. <sighs> the room was way too small for my flailing arms, and I banged into the wall hard enough to produce an echo. Everything okay in there? Asked Evelyn. Just peachy, I'll be out in a second. I hadn't seen the upper shelf behind me at first, but now that I did, I spotted a helmet perched atop it. A visor of thick, curved glass dominated the front. Even though my boyhood dreams had been full of stuff like that, I felt it for a... I, I left it for last. I felt it for last. I left it for last. Right now, I had my hands full, wrestling with a variety of Velcro strips, micro levers, and magnetic locks. Try as I might, I was clearly losing the battle. Putting the suit on may have been confusing for a beginner like me, but at least the material was comfortable once I was wearing it. Pressurized penis pocket aside, it felt warm and didn't restrict my full range of motion. I wasn't sure if it was designed to contain its own atmosphere, but it was clearly a heavily modified version of what astronaut, astronauts wore during their extravehicular activity. <sighs> Sorry. You siege. How All dare right. you? <laughs> but it was clearly a heavily modified version of what astronauts wore during their extravehicular extra extra vehicular activities. Finally, I felt like I was ready to reach up and grab the helmet with my gloved hands. As soon as I clicked it into place over my head, the reverberation of my own breathing and the change in air quality reminded me exactly how isolated I truly was. I was giddy, too. As uncertain as I was about what came next, I couldn't help but feel at least a little privileged that I'd gotten geared up like this. There wasn't a mirror in here. But I did a slow turn anyway. Looking down at myself proved to be impossible with the helmet on, which meant that I couldn't see if I'd missed an obvious strap or seal. Oh well, I'd done my best. My old clothes were piled in the corner, my new life as a shut-in had made me fairly subversive when it came to the topic of how often to change your underwear, and my boxers were right there on top. I hurriedly bent down to scoop them up just as the door behind me opened. Time's up, Evelyn said. There's a whole row of mag clamps back here you forgot to attach, by the way. Fuck, so that was why my ass was so drafty. I reached back to check on exactly how much of myself was exposed... Too much, was the answer. Sorry, I said sheepishly. You have to go commando in this thing. You're probably used to seeing full moons though, right? I flinched at the sound of my own voice. The helmet must have a mic to amplify it since it was now booming in the small space. She was blushing again, but at least this time she was trying to hide her smile at the same time. I didn't know if she was laughing at me or with me, but I'd clearly given her an eyeful. <laughs> Once or twice. I stood up and faced her, still holding my clothes as I tried to speak more quietly. That was more artless than it had to be, huh? I've never worn one of those things before. She shrugged. If you have, now turn back around and I'll help you with this last part. Reluctantly, I did as she asked. Speakers near my ears augmented my hearing, 
piping. That was a very like New Jersey augmented. It yeah. augmented my hearing, and we all went to the beach in the summer on Long Island. That's very clever. You're you're trying to throw people. You're gonna, right. People will hear that and they'll be like, I knew there was something a little different. And now I know it's from he's from Jersey. Right, exactly. He's some like 90 year old grandma wearing like <laughs> a blue rinse. It's great. Reluctantly, I did as she asked. Speakers near my ears augmented my hearing, piping in her unintendedly sexy little grunt as she tried to ah, as she tried to tug the two halves of the back of the uniform into place. Her little noises of effort and the occasional brush of her warm fingertips on my bare back had a predictable effect on me. After a couple of seconds, I heard the air down at my crotch try to compensate for my erection. It hurt, but it wasn't like I could complain about it to her. Face me and I'll check on the rest, she said at last. I'm good, I told her. If I turned around now, I'd poke her in the hip with it. Stop wasting time and turn around. We've less than three minutes left. I reluctantly did as she asked, just barely managing to avoid whacking her with my tented suit. Evelyn went about the process with remarkable precision, checking on the places that had been the most difficult to get right. I thought I was home free until she glanced down. My heart sank. She was merciful, though. That reminds me, Adam. You aren't allowed to alter or adjust the suit, okay? Did you see the control panel on the back? Nope. I croaked. Well, it's there. Uh, if and when you get a good look at it, leave it alone. You aren't authorized to change anything. If the temperature is wrong or the gloves aren't as grippy as you want them to be, let the technician know and they'll sort it out on your behalf. Okay. And please, try not to break it. I guess it goes without saying that this is space-age stuff, but they really pushed the envelope to make everything to spec. Not that they had a choice, since the rules of the Citadel exactly spell it out. I was looking right at her face when she said the word rules, and I saw right away that she knew what that she'd messed up. Huh? What rules? She shook her head fiercely, reaching up to readjust her glasses on her nose and waving me through the open door with her other hand. I hate keeping secrets. Despise it, actually. Let's forget I said anything and just get you in there, okay? But... Please... Don't push for me. Don't push for more. If I end up saying too much, I'll just end up holding it again. If I end up saying too much, I'll just end up holding it against you. That wouldn't be fair on you. Be patient, and you'll see for yourself in... Another watch check. Crap. In 102 seconds. I took a deep breath and let it out as slowly as I could, trying hard to respect her wishes. Despite the way I'd been brought here, I felt like she was genuinely trying to help me out. I didn't trust them, but I didn't mistrust her. Okay, Evelyn, let's do this. Agreed. The labyrinth is directly below us. It takes up most of the station, actually. Come with me and I'll drop off you... And I'll drop off you... I'll drop you off right in the middle of it. And then... She may have told me not to ask any more questions, but I was desperate for a hint regarding what I was in for. And then you'll see why 13 days could change everything. Dun, dun, dun. Amazing. Awesome. Good job, guys. Thanks. Whew. It sounds like so much fun. And you get a cock right. pocket. Right? Who, do, who <laughs> so doesn't cool. want a cock pocket? I want a cable. What? <laughs> what was that? I want a cock pocket, but I don't have a cock. Aww. Can you borrow Poor someone me. else's, or can you rent one? Like, there must be some way, right? Yeah, it's just that it always, it always ends up coming with this whole man. Oh, gross! <laughs> <laughs> Hate that. <laughs> never want me to detach it. <laughs> wah wah. Never mind. No cock pocket for you. <laughs> It sounds like a shoot off of the brand, like Hot Pocket, which I'm a bit yeah. disturbed about. <laughs> 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 Michael, there we go. 
All right, so it's uh, Cav time. Yeah. I think so that's Cav, you... chapter 11. Is that the end of it for me? That's the end of your scene. Correct. You wanna... You can... I'm going to Walgreens now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Well, Annie's leaving. Because she, cause she hates you all. She's done. Bye, Annie. <laughs> I love that it has a jingle now too. This is brilliant. This is how weird project pro, pro, products make it to market, guys. It all starts with a dream and an idea, and some group support. Um, am I going from the beginning of chapter eleven? Yeah. Amazing. What's the microphone that you guys have got there, the the red one? This is an Avantone CV12. Oh, very nice, very nice. It sounds lovely. Thank you. All right. I always swore I'd never be that person that's like, oh, what gear have you got? Like, it's the most boring <laughs> line of conversation ever, but it's genuinely I'm a... quite fun. <laughs> I'm into I always, I always love gear, so... Oh, so compelling. I totally relate. All right, so what's... uh? What's uh, our, um, what's our first line of the scene? Um, beginning of chapter eleven is it could have killed me right then and there, but it looks like this is just me in this chapter. Yeah, I might have been wrong about Cav. Oh, is Cav in... not going to be in it? Yeah, he certainly speaks, but I think that maybe either not yet or already. Do we have a cab scene that we can uh, we can use? Yeah, sure. I mean, we can still do this scene. Should I do oh, it whilst the... you guys are searching? I think I mostly cho chose this one because it was so different from the one we just did. Let's talk more rock. Yeah, I can do it. Whilst you guys are looking for another scene with uh, Kevin. That sounds good. Amazing. Chapter 11. Oh, I get to squeal and chitter in agony. That's awesome. I'm excited. I'm excited. It could have killed me right then and there. I was paralyzed by the speed of the thing, unable to decide whether I should try to dodge to the side or just scramble backwards. I couldn't manage to convince myself that either action would have been successful since the reach of those arms was overwhelming. As dire as the situation was, at least part of my brain was still working overtime. It may not have been able to get my body moving just yet, but that didn't stop me from trying to work out a way to bring this thing down. I'd been thinking of all of its limbs as arms, but I'd been mistaken. Now that it didn't have its host to help support its weight, the mosquito thing had to use some of its limbs to keep itself upright. If it didn't, it'd fall face first onto the spike. That frightening proboscis was as interesting as it was intimidating. Right up until a couple of seconds ago, it had been the stuff of nightmares, but I was close enough now to get a good look at it. I'd been assuming that the lethal looking spear would be its main method of attack, but I was pretty sure the hollow tube was too flimsy for that. In fact, it might not even be willing to attack me with it. Obviously, it was still something to stay the hell away from, but the way it favored its claws was sending a message loud and clear. The spike was too valuable to risk on prey that may still be able to fight back. It reared up above me and paused, making a thickly wet noise instead of striking. A dark liquid began to pump along the... A dark liquid began to pump along the length of the otherwise transparent hypodermic attached to its face. Some of the fluid sprayed from the end and I shiver, shivered involuntarily. I went full British there, shivered involuntarily. I was terribly scared. Gosh, I fell into a faint. My mother had to come with smelling salts to rouse me from the floor. <laughs> But after a cup of tea and a crumpet, everything was all right again. <laughs> Some of the fluids, the Downton Abbey rewrite, like the mashup, it's great. 
Some of the fluid sprayed from the end and I shivered involuntarily. It reminded me of the way the doctors and nurses squirted the excess dose from a syringe, a sight I'd seen far too often. I jumped back. The fluid hadn't really been aimed in my direction, but it missed me anyway. What was left in the air made everything taste sour. The eyes spun again as it bobbed its head from one side to the other. I couldn't be sure, but it felt like it was trying to guess how much of that shit it'd need to fill me with in order to make me as docile as the other poor beasts had been. Come on, asshole, I growled under, under my breath. No, I didn't. Come on, asshole, I growled under my breath. I had nothing to attack it with, and run, running from it would surely only buy me a vicious backstab. Don't just stand there. End it so I can get back to the glade and ask Toot how to fuck you up next time. It was still waiting, choosing instead to bide its time. Of course, I thought. It didn't want to kill me. Not yet, at least, because that wasn't how parasites worked. A healthy host was a useful vessel. There was no point in damaging a body it was planning on owning. I felt the back of my neck itch as one final realization dawned on me. If I didn't die, there'd be no respawn. I'd be a prisoner to its, to its chemical demands for the rest of my 13 days. All of the time I'd been supposed to spend learning the ropes would be wasted in one fell swoop. That pissed me off. Glancing over at the furry thing still standing over there made, me, made my temper flare even more. The mosquito's last victim hadn't moved a muscle, and I had only to look into its weeping eyes to see what horrors soon awaited me. I'd been gathering flowers because they might prove useful later on, and this mosquito bastard was down here collecting bodies. Last chance, I lied, trying to convince the thing above me that I meant business. Walk away. This field's mine now. I guess my bluff failed because the insect didn't budge. It obviously didn't think much of my ability as an opponent, which meant my threat had been baseless. Even if it did understand me, could I really blame it for ignoring me? My flesh was no match for its exoskeleton, and whatever musculature I owned didn't have and whatever musculature I owned didn't have a hope in hell of wrestling it to the ground. It was built for the kill, complete with fast attacks and a huge reach advantage but all those clear-cut bonuses made the insect incredibly arrogant. Having been rightfully accused of arrogance as well, I was no stranger to how careless it made you. This thing could have stabbed the needle down on me at any time in the last 30 seconds, but it was so satisfied that I was helpless, it preferred to wait for the perfect opening to present itself. The stubby mandibles on either side of the needle's foundation ground together, making a noise that sounded exactly like a hollow, chitinous chuckle. Okay, let me try this. Let me try this. I'm excited. <laughs> Definitely chitinous. I like that. The head bobbing it had been do the head bobbing it had been doing became more emphasized, and that made me even more sure of what I was seeing. It was fucking laughing at me. That was the last straw. I didn't like being toyed with. I'd spent too many hours over the last few months feeling exactly like this. Helpless beneath the gaze of something far too big for me to ever contemplate fighting. Cancer is a soulless demon that, always, that enjoys every moment of your suffering. And for this creature to do the same thing was just too damn much for, this, for me to take. I had just gotten a reprieve, however short, from the headaches and the nausea and the thoughts of suicide. I wasn't about to let it get taken away. I wouldn't have expected anyone to cope with the level of frustration and anger that coursed through me, which meant that I wasn't surprised at all when my rage made me get up and charge headlong at the piece of shit in front of me. Now that I finally had an opponent I could take a swing at, I wasn't going to miss the opportunity. I blitzed straight at the nearest leg it was using to support its weight, since the rest of it was out of reach. The Citadel had given me roughly similar 
The Citadel had given me roughly similar abilities to those I had on Earth, which meant that a flying kung fu jump kick wasn't on my list of assets. I could punch, though, and I took a wild, angry swing at the joint that connected the lower part of the limb to the segment above it. Skill, rage. The ability to ignore common sense and act without regard to personal safety. Base score, 42. New score, 43. Effect, 20% increased damage, 20% decreased chance of success. Reminder, no skill may drop below 5%. Bonus effect, once per citadel en en enmeshment. Enmeshment, the negative effect can be ignored. In addition, subsequent attacks on the same target gain a cumulative 5% greater chance to inflict critical damage. Your ability to use rage will end for the current enmeshment once the critical hit is achieved. Would you like to enable the bonus effect of rage now? Yes! I shouted, roaring the words so loud that the mosquito actually twitched, peering down at me even closer. I didn't know what the hell an enmeshment was, but I'd worked that but I worked that out later. Right now, I was ready to inflict some pain. I'm actually gonna change this. This is gonna be more me. Skill melee strike. The ability for your body to inflict physical damage. Base score eleven. New score twelve. Cool. Or not. I missed, but I didn't let that go uh, get to me. I missed, but I didn't let that get to me. With a skill that low, it had bound. It, it had been bound to happen. The mosquito batted me away with an almost gentle bump that nonetheless sent me spinning. I managed to stay on my feet and took another crack at the joint. This time, my fist glanced off the shiny exoskeleton, exoskeleton, tearing a big line of hurt up my arm, but doing nothing to the target. Minus two hit points. Skill melee strike. Base score 12, new score 13. It didn't even bother to dodge. And instead of knocking me out of the way again, it just stood there and took it. It must have decided that was the best course of action. It must have decided that the best course of action was to let me wear myself out. My third attack was just went just wide, and my fourth was so comically off target that I actually stepped forward, slipped, and gave myself a black eye against the armored leg. That's is you. this him? Is okay. this me again? No, no, this is uh this is Cav. Ah, there we go. All right, so so this is like a mental yeah, that's like right. Like a telepathic type of thing. Yeah, uh -huh. and it's, it's, a, it's, it's a mangled kind of English. You know, it's okay. more about doing the plan. Uh, okay. This one enough had. The words felt like they started in both ears and rushed towards the middle, crashing together painfully in my brain. Not quite, I muttered. I lashed out with a decent snap kick, but I started too far back and ended up missing by a hair. Cav three Jarv has patience limited. I planted my feet and timed my next punch perfectly, swiveling my hips and driving all of my body weight through the target, aiming at a sp spot a couple of inches inside the joint. It felt right from the moment I threw it, and I knew before I even made contact that this one was going to be the one that did it. Critical strike. Skill melee strike, base score 13, new score 14. My fist blasted through the exoskeleton, sending shards of chitin, chit, chitin, 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 yeah, chitin. chitin. sending shards, shards of chitin cartwheeling away. The leg had been planted on the ground and the lower part of it stayed right there as cavi three, whatever, reared back without it. It shrieked and the noise blasted through my mind and the air at the same time. As good as it felt to do some damage, I wasn't out of the woods yet. The stump stopped pumping the thin gruel that passed for blood, and I backed away as it tested the stub against the soil. It was hobbling, but Cav still had more than enough mobility to run me down. I decided not to give in to the chance, give, give it, I decided not to give it the chance. Thankfully, my rage was fading already, which let the all-consuming anger take a back seat to the plotting it I had to do, if I was going to use this moment to the fullest. Here goes nothing. I stepped up, ready to take a swing at the other arm on the same side of its body as the limb I'd just amputated. 
and promptly fell forward onto my face. I lay there, summoning all of my nerve, trying to blank my mind in case it had found a way to put more than just its voice in there. If I moved too soon, I'd be right back where I'd started, fight, fighting an opponent that could beat me in any of a dozen ways. If I waited too long to dodge, though, well, then I'd be this thing's bitch for a while. Say la vie and all that. I held my breath, trying to cheat and use my peripheral vision to watch the angle of its remaining legs. It would have to lower its body in order to drive the spike in. If I was fast and I was lucky, maybe I could get out of the way. It took its time to line up the strike, not bothering to conceal the movement. Even now, after what I'd just done to it, Cav was so sure of its victory that it actually laughed one more time before its body tilted and its head flashed forward. Now! I threw myself to the side, rolling as far from where I'd been as I could. I banged off one of its arms, but it didn't take a swipe at me because Cav had other things to worry about. Just then... Well... I think I read that wrong, but it didn't take a swipe at me because Cav had other things to worry about just then. The soil was soft. I noticed that as soon as I'd started trekking across the field. It had jammed the spike into the ground all the way up to its face, and the momentary constriction made it panic. Its horrid, insectoid eyes spun wildly only a couple of inches from my face, glaring at me with more malice than I'd have even thought possible. So much for the cold, calculating insect that had thought me its lesser. Now it was just a pissed off animal. The potent mix of fear and anger rushing through it, doing the same thing to its brain that my own rage had done to me. Human urn always pain. Despite the threat, Calf froze for a second. I didn't. I'd gotten over the shock of being outmatched early in the bout, which gave me time to bunch my legs up underneath me and pivot my hip against the ground, bracing my shoulders against its arm as I lashed out as, as I lashed out with as devastating a kick as I could manage. I was far too close to miss, and the bottoms of both my feet slammed into its eye. I felt it crunched beneath my boots as the impact made it squelch yellow ooze. I'd really wanted to attack the base of the needle, but Cav's face had been too close to the ground for me to get a clear shot. Now that its eye was out of commission, the mosquito yanked its head up a little, clearly groggy. Half of the dangerous syringe was still in the soil, but I could reach the spot where it connected the between the mandibles now. I pushed myself to my feet and lunged, managing to get a clean strike off that nonetheless... Managing to get a, get a clean strike off that nonetheless missed... It didn't matter. My attack may not have hit what I was aiming for, but my body still accidentally fell across the trapped proboscis, snapping it off cleanly at the base. I had been right about the organ being fragile, and my, fragile, and my desperate flailing sheared it off without much resistance. Cav squealed and chittered in agony. It didn't have most of its mouth anymore, and more of that and more of that pallid goo was pouring out in waves as it appeared to vomit up parts of its pressurized internals. My victory was short-lived. This thing might not be able to resume its career of hijacking mines or any aspirations of winning a marathon, but it was no longer unsure of how to handle me. By destroying the needle, I'd made death the only suitable option. I was still too close to make a break for it, so I made a grab for the leg that I'd bumped up against, trying to get another shot at that damaged eye. That didn't work out the way I thought it would. All the mosquito did was lift its leg and shake me free, sending me tumbling through the air before I hit the ground and rolled a few yards in the direction of the glade. The glade. I was up on my feet and running before the idea had a chance to fully form in my head. The glade was a dead end. The last time I'd been in it, those oddly corkscrewed trees and the vines with the purple thorns had closed me in. I knew, with it, I knew they wouldn't let me pass them. They couldn't, because every game has a starting point. But I didn't need to go farther than the spot where I'd discovered Toot. I sprinted for it now, struck by how little physical progress I'd made in the Citadel. I'd gone, what? 
300 yards total and died once, and now I had something angry and wounded charging along behind me, limping badly but still gaining ground with every step, intent on tearing me apart. It turns out that I can run pretty fast when my life depends on it. I heard Cav's uneven stride change and dodge to the right, barely managing to keep my balance as a set of claws tore up the section of flowers I'd just occupied. I'm getting very phlegmy with this accent. <laughs> I need to like empty my spit valve. <laughs> Ooh. I, I, actually, this is probably a good, a good place to stop because it's, oh. it's six o'clock now. Amazing. And we still have quite a quite a ways to go before the chapter ends. So incredible! Uh, it's a good place. It's a good place to end in suspense because we don't know what the hell is going to happen with Cav. I love it. Uh, I loved your um. I loved your mosquito sounds as well. Oh, that was a, that was a thing of beauty. Yeah. Anything you want to change about uh, about Cav, Matthew? Uh, I thought I thought Cav was awesome. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. Note for you, Will. Whenever, whenever you come across a good spot for to get some calf sounds, mm -hmm. drop a locator. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll, I'll take care of it. Yeah, amazing. I'm with that for sure. I think the only Will. I mean, that was an amazing job. I, I, I guess I was supposed to be thinking, but I was really just having fun listening along. The, the oh, only, thank you. <laughs> the, only thing that made me, the only thing that made me flinch, like internally, aside from. Occasionally, where I use the same word twice in a sentence, which makes me want to die. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that made me flinch internally on your behalf was um, mosquito, as opposed to I know it, I know it's a British thing. I live in Australia now, and I hear uh, the same thing. So it, maybe maybe it starts with it, it's, the emphasis is on the first syllable. Uh, I guess I guess like you know like mosquito kind of takes a high and uh -huh. mosquito kind of takes a low. You know what I mean? Like yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Definitely. It's the same with, I had another author recently who was like, I love your narration, but every time you say the word frustrated, you say it really weirdly. She's like, it's frustrated, not frustrated. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, Hermione Granger. Oh, my bad. <laughs> but yeah, that was awesome. Thanks so much for this, guys. Yeah, thank you uh, for, for, for writing it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to have so much fun as this mosquito <laughs> monster disgusting thing. I love playing disgusting, terrible creatures. Yeah, that's um, great. You can clear your phlegm and, and will win game. Yeah, I mean, I am a disgusting, terrible creature, so it'll be a, a break from the norm for me. Um, <laughs> we're switching places. Um, I love it. All right, cool. So, uh, thanks everybody for coming and hanging out with us for for watching the show. If this is your first Sound Booth Theater live, please uh, please subscribe to the channel if you like this particular video. Give us a thumbs up, and um, you can see in the description below up bunch of different links links including the amazon uh link to where you can buy the kindle version of matthew siege's save point upload if you uh, can't wait for the audio version to come out first and then there's also a couple facebook group links uh for the sbtl facebook group the gamelet society and the lit rpg forum as well as a link to studio bricks website where you can investigate their nice shiny beautiful booths <laughs> so again matthew thank you will thank you for putting on a show for us thank you and we will see everybody again shortly i i don't know when the next actually the next sound booth theater live is on monday for everybody loves large chests part four and annie is joining me for this one so lots lots of cool stuff coming up and that's going to be our european edition it's going to be at noon so, yep. Represent. Uh, yep. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks again, and have a good day. Bye.